Welcome to the Discovery Doc Podcast, where we advocate for optimal wellness and reducing everyday toxic loads, no matter where life takes you. I'm Dr. Cece, doctor in nursing practice, self-proclaimed toxin tamer, and a crunchy mama. I'm Anna Kate, a medical mystery overachiever and your discovery liaison. Join us on this exciting journey as we explore the world of holistic health, cutting edge research, and practical solutions for a healthier life. Together, we'll navigate through the complexities of wellness, sharing valuable insights, and expert advice. Tune in to the Discovery Doc Podcast. Get ready to be inspired, empowered, and discover a whole new way of looking at your health. Parental advisory recommended. This podcast episode dives into sensitive topics that may not be suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is strongly advised. The discussions include explicit language and address themes such as childhood trauma, abuse, and other challenging experiences. The content involves personal narratives related to parenting adopted children who have faced trauma. This episode contains adult-oriented language and graphic depictions of difficult themes. The conversations may be distressing for some listeners, particularly those who have experienced childhood trauma or abuse. It is crucial to prioritize your mental well-being, and if you find the content triggering or overwhelming, consider seeking support from a mental health professional. Please be aware that this episode is not appropriate for young audiences. Listener discretion is advised, and parental guidance is strongly recommended. It is essential to recognize your own emotional boundaries and refrain from listening if you believe the content may negatively impact your mental health. Remember, your well-being is paramount, and reaching out for support is a sign of strength. If you are struggling, consider taking a mental health, talking to a mental health professional who can provide assistance and guidance. All right. Welcome back to the Discovery Doc Podcast. I'm here with your host, Dr. Cece, functional medicine, nurse practitioner, self-proclaimed toxin tamer, and crunchy mama of three, almost four, almost there, guys, and my co-host. I'm Anna Kate, your medical mystery overachiever and discovery liaison, and we are back for part two with Kayla. So if you did not listen to our last episode, go and listen to Kayla's incredible story, and we're going to jump in on this episode in the continuation of her story and the new lives that she is pouring into as the super mom that she is highly qualified to be. Yes. I'm just going to put that out there. hundred so, percent. Yes. And for those of you who don't know, go back, like Anna Kate said, go back and listen. But not only is Kayla obviously a good friend of mine, and that's first and foremost, but she's won like two freaking gold medalists or medals in the Olympics. She's won like MMA champion belts and all, all these things, which is insane. But the, I, in my opinion, the best title that she has been just rewarded by God is a mama. And so can you, you mentioned in our last episode that you did adopt your kiddos. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about what that looked like and how much time did you yeah. have to prepare, if any? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, I agree with you. My, the best role I have ever been given, uh, the best title I have ever received is the, the title of mom. Um, my birds are going crazy. Sorry. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> There's both of them. Wait, you guys, if you're not watching this on YouTube, she literally has two freaking parakeets just flying around in the background. I don't believe in keeping animals in cages. So we have a, this farm is called Safe Haven and everyone here is free. Um, Anyways, my kids, yes. So, um, you know, some more tragedy hit my family. Um, in 2019, my mother suffered, um, had a stroke. And her husband at the time, um, she was the caretaker for my niece and nephew, um, Kyla and Emery, who were like five and six months seven, you know, baby. And, um, so my mom had a stroke COVID hit. And then, you know, five months later, um, in 2019, in May of 2019, my mom was starting to make a recovery. She's, she's doing great. Um, but five months later, her husband very suddenly passed away mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, it was unexpected. Um, I flew up to Ohio to help take care of, um, the arrangements and, and, and I packed, I rented a car and I packed up the car with the kids stuff and we drove back down to Florida and they haven't, they haven't left since. Um, and I ended up officially adopting them in, um, 20, 20, 20. 21. Um, 
2021. And, but yeah, no, I had, there was no preparation. There was no, um, yeah, it had some, it had, it, you know, it was, it was tough. My sister, um, struggles with addiction and was in and out of, um, rehab and prison and, um, you know, we're, I'm super, I'm praying for her super hard right now. She is, um, she's just left, um, a court mandated rehab and she's going to be in a sober living house now, but, um, she, she made the tough decision and she signed over her parental rights. And, and so now I adopted Kyla and Emery and, um, we're a wolf pack, we're a family, but yeah, it was, um, it was kind of tough in the beginning, how, how it all happened and, um, Right. What was not how I, not how I expected to become a mom. Right. I mean, on that drive back to Florida, what was going through your brain? Oh, I was scared shitless. Um, you know, my mom was, first of all, she was recovering from a stroke. Um, and she had just lost this another, you know, she's buried to two men now. Um, my, my stepdad, who I call dad, he committed suicide when I was in my early 20s. And then Bob, um, my mom had been with Bob for a long time. And um, so she was, you know, grieving and and I knew that I was capable. It was during COVID. I didn't have a fight. And I mean, I, none of that was even in my head. It was just like I just like was overwhelmed with this like um, I was like, I've got to get these kids. Like, I've got to take these kids. I have to, I didn't, I didn't, had never, you know, I was the fun aunt before. Like I would go pick up Kyla and she'd come stay with me for the summer and I'd take her to Disney and she'd stay up late and we'd have sleepovers and I'd hop her up on sugar. And then I'd be like, all right, I'll see you. You know, like we'd FaceTime and, but I had never been a, a mom. Um, and I was scared shitless, you know, first of all, like I didn't know the first I hadn't spent a ton of time with Emery. Emery was actually born in prison. Um, there's a program where the moms can keep the kids. And so for the first six months of his life, he was in prison. And then um, my sister got out. She ended up breaking parole. You can't take the kids back in. So Emery went to stay with my mom. And a couple months later, um, he came to stay with me, but I didn't, I hadn't spent a ton of time with him. Hadn't spent a ton of time around my ex had a daughter who I, you know, I'm grateful for that experience because she taught me, um, she taught me that I could love something that I, you know, more than I ever imagined that I didn't give birth to, you know, she taught me about unconditional love. Um, but yeah, we were, I was a mess. They were a mess. You know, it was, um, super traumatic for them. And, you know, looking back, I wish that I had handled it a little bit differently, especially for my daughter. You know, we're finally getting to a place where it's better, but, um, you know, she's in therapy and, and, but like, I didn't explain to her that like she was coming to live with me. Like she thought she was just coming to visit again. And, um, you know, Emery couldn't talk or anything at the time. Shush! <laughs> Can you hear them? Can you hear them? Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. I'm sorry. It's usually peaceful, but not when you're doing a podcast. Yeah. Um, well, you went from yeah. that mess to a message in that you're the safe place for these kids and that they call you mom now because that's who you are in their life. And you're that stable um, anchor and reference point that no matter what chaos happens yeah. in their life, they can come back to you is that safe space of, I know that mom yep. is going to take care of me and whatever happens with your sister and their biological mother in the future that mm -hmm. yes, you'd hope that they'd have a healthy relationship in the yep. future, but they will always have a healthy relationship with you yes. kind of no matter what. So what are your tips of, um, for other moms that have gone from zero to full family or may feel unprepared or unqualified as a new mom. How do you, how well, do you for that? I mean, the first thing that I'll say is none of us know what the hell we're doing. You know, like 
I, in my head, I thought like, oh my gosh, I'm so unqualified. I don't know anything. I've never, you know, I didn't give birth to them. Like, what if I'm not enough? What if I'm messing it up? What if I'm, you know, not the person, like none of us know what we're doing, whether you're a mom of three or you adopt or you are preparing for your first child and you're scared shitless. Like that's how we all feel all the time. Like none of us know what we're doing. Um, and you just do the best that you can. You mm -hmm. just do the best that you can. And that is enough. And that is what those kids need. They need you to number one, take care of yourself um, because they learn how to love themselves based on how you love yourself. Mm -hmm. And number two, they need you to be present and they need your love. They don't need much else. My kids play, We. I am a multimillionaire and my kids play with Amazon boxes, you know? Like they don't give a shit. Like, they don't need, they don't need anything other than your love and your time and your affection. Like that's it, you know? And I didn't know that at first. I thought I had to be perfect and I had to feed them like this, like, you know, my daughter moved in. She was extremely, um, she was, mal you know, malnourished. She was underweight. She's petite to start with, but she was set six years old and like 34 pounds. Mm -hmm. She didn't eat anything. She ate like mac and cheese grilled cheese and pancakes, you know? And I was like, I made it my, I feel so bad. I made it my mission in life. I was like, I'm going to get this girl to eat protein. Like we're going to bulk her up. I'm going to, you know, I was scared, you know, it was from a place of fear. Like I was terrified. I was like, she's not healthy. Like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I made all of our lives miserable for that first year. Like I was like every dinner time, we all three would be crying. Like she would be crying to go home. She didn't want to be here. I would be crying because she was crying. Emery would be crying because I was crying. Like it was, it was so hard. And I finally realized and let go of this like urge to control. I, I didn't know like she, food was the one thing in her life she had control over at that time, mm -hmm. right? Like this is a six year old girl. Her mom has left her, her dad doesn't exist. Her lovey was sick and in the hospital for months. Then all of a sudden, Bob's dead. Now she's going to live with her aunt in Florida, but she doesn't even know she's like, she's just trying, like food was what she could control. And I, here I am like, eat your, eat the chicken, eat it, you know? And we all, we all make mistakes. We all mess up. We all do the best we can. Like I wasn't doing it to be mean. I was doing it because I was scared, but like, that's my message. That's it, man. Like, just do the best you can. Love them. Love yourself. And give yourself grace. Like, ugh, give yourself yeah. grace. Because it is not easy. It's not easy. Like, raising humans is... It's hard. Being a good parent is the hardest job in the world. Yeah. The hardest job in the world. Like, like, you... It's a gift. And it's a responsibility. And it's a privilege. And... Um, if you take that seriously, the stress and the fear and the anxiety of like, am I doing it right? Is like, can be consuming. So give yourself grace, do the best that you can. And just know that we're all, we're all out here in the dark, just like fumbling around <laughs> trying to figure it out, you cool. know, like. I think like one of the biggest gifts you can give your kids is them understanding that perfection is not obtainable, that perfection mm -hmm. is not real. And so, yes, there's boundaries to it. Like, you know, I'm not going to yell and scream and argue with my husband in front of my kids, but they, I'm, we're very honest with our kids in that like we as adults are still growing and mm -hmm. still healing and still oh, adapting yeah. and changing. And things will happen in our house and I'll sit down with Ava and Jackson, you know, Jada's too little, but I'll sit down with them and be like, listen guys, we're human. And daddy and I, we're doing this life yeah. thing for the first time, just like you guys are. And so we, there are times where we're not going to have it right. We're, but we're going to, I promise you, we're going to sit down from that and kind of assess what happened and talk about it and yeah. move forward. But for us in our home, that's something that's very important for us to teach them and talk to them because perfection is not real. It's mm -hmm. a facade. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. A hundred percent. And I, 
it took me a while to get to that point where I was able to be not even honest with my kids, but honest with myself, where it was like, oh, like, you're not gonna be perfect. Like, all of these ideals that you have for yourself, like, you're gonna fuck up, you're gonna lose your shit, you're gonna, you know, feed them fast food, like, it's gonna happen, like, you're gonna be like it just it's not realistic it's not real and I I do talk to Kyla and Emery about that too you know like we I I say to them like I tell them the truth I'm like listen like we're a team and mom is super tired like I'm training uh twice a day like I'm taking you to all your activities I'm picking like we're I'm tired like I I need help can can you help me you know like and if they can't then I say okay like I'll figure it out but for sure, I'm much more honest with them now than I was in the beginning where I, and they can sense that, right? Like kids know, um, kids know authenticity. Like kids know when you're being your true self. And and I, and I a big thing that I also learned to do is apologize. Like yes. I mirror to them, like when I, cause my son, so both of my kids obviously have a lot of trauma. So there's a lot that we're, dealing with and overcoming and healing and also growing like we're all growing at the same time and when i fuck up i say it like if i mm -hmm. yell at my son i you know i say to him hey you know what mommy was frustrated i was upset that we were going to be late for school but it's not okay to yell at you i'm sorry i did that what do you think i could do different next time you know like well, mom, you should have pet the dog, you know? Like, why didn't you go blow bubbles? And I'm like, you're right. I should have gone to blow bubbles. I should have taken some deep breaths. I should have asked for a hug. Like, we practice these things. And I practice them too. Like, parenting them helps me reparent me. And yes. I think about it all the time. Like, I say to myself all the time, like, I have three children. I have Kyla, I have Emery, and I have PBK, Precious Baby Kayla. What is Precious Baby Kayla doing now? Because if you don't take care of her, you're sure as hell not going to be able to take care of them. Like you have to show them by taking care of you. A hundred percent. And also to your point, if you don't do that, then they will trigger you so badly. Like they will trigger that inner baby Kayla where that's what you're then responding to yeah. and responding to in an inappropriate way or that a way that you just don't want to. And it's not because of what they did. It's only because yes. of experience you've had and you are triggered and that's something that i have to work on i sit back and if i'm like quick to trigger with ava or jackson i'm like whoa bro like they didn't do anything why am i responding mm -hmm. like this oh it's me mm -hmm. nobody tells you how hard it is to try and um uh soothe someone's nervous system who is fucking rubbing your nervous system raw you know like no one tells you how hard that is like okay i have to self-regulate before i can even try to self-regulate him because i'm about to like i'm super triggered right now like i just want to like ah yeah no one tells you how hard that is and that is why you're right like i spend a lot of time like in front of emory and kyla like Yes. And like, dude, one of my favorite things as a mom, like it makes me so happy. Um, my kids will just come and say, hey, can I have a hug? And I'm like, hell yeah, you can. Come here. Bring it in. Like Kyla will just be sitting there reading a book and she'll be like, mom, can I have a hug? And I'm like, absolutely. Like, come here. How big, little, strong, small. Sh like, what do you want? I got them forever. Mm -hmm. You have all the hugs for me forever. And it's funny because now they do it to me. Like if I've had a bad practice and they can tell that I'm like, you know, I'm sad or I'm like weepy or, you know, my, Kylo or Emery, well, they'll just say, hey, hey mama. And I'm like, yeah, I love you. And I'm like, holy oh, shit, man. like I'm, I'm seen. Like mm -hmm. not only am I be, seeing them and, and answering their needs, but like now my kids start to do it to me too. And I'm like, wow, like it, this is how insane, it happened. Yes, that's an insane feeling. I, I will, so two things that that reminds me of is one, like we, Will and I are very different in how we process our emotions. Like Will has to take time to himself 
if he's like kind of getting to that heightened state. And so Ava is kind of like that too, where we'll be like, baby, do you just need a moment? Like it's totally fine to have these emotions. You can feel these emotions, but do you just need to go right. take some quiet time? And so now she's at the point yeah. where she'll be like, mommy, I just need some quiet time. Like I'm going to go take mm-hmm. some time for myself. And then the mm-hmm. other thing, she wrote me a note the other, like a couple of weeks ago, it was just a high stress time and she could sense it. And I really try hard for my kids not to be able to sense it. She wrote me a note while at school and it just, all, she, all it said was, mommy, you're doing a great job and whatever you can't control, let God have. Oh my and God. I love her. And I was like, what? Out of the mouth of babes. Yes. Literally. Literally. Oh my God. I know. Oh. I have, I kept it. I'm going to keep it forever, but it's oh. just like when you give them that space and they really do they take care of you just like you take care of them and it is the most insane rewarding feeling Mm -hmm. i saw something that said um it's you 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 said that you try not to let your kids sense it and i saw something that said when you're going through the storm make sure your kids don't get wet and i was like hmm and i thought about it and at first i was like damn that's really good like i need to remember that like make sure your kids don't get wet make sure your kids don't get wet and then i realized like No, like I'm their mom and we're a unit. And obviously like, I don't want them to go through trauma or like be, but it's okay for me to be human in front of my kids. Mm -hmm. And it's okay for me to show myself love and show myself grace and show all of the parts of me because they're like, there is no perfect human. We're not perfect. And that was the other big piece that I wanted to talk about today about being a mom is that like dude get yourself a tribe okay like nobody raises fucking kids by themselves like people who pretend like they do i thought i had to do everything by myself when i first got my kids i was like i couldn't ask for help i didn't know how i was like i can't ask for how long these are i took this role i i'm this is my responsibility i'm gonna take them to everything i'm gonna do everything i'm gonna and like the second that I realized, like, oh, no, like, it does take a village, dude, my, the game changed. Like, mm-hmm. it's okay for me to ask crazy Aunt Bella or crazy Aunt Michelle or crazy KK, crazy Aunt KK, like, <laughs> hey, like, I'm running late and I um, I have to do this interview. And can you pick up the kids from school today? Like, that's healthy. It's yeah. not healthy. For you to create such a stressful environment in your life that like you're constantly like overstimulated overworked like exhausted like you don't then you're not your best self for your kids like the right. moment i learned how to ask for help and i found people that i can trust that are safe that are going to love my kids and love on my kids the way that i love on them like i am such a i'm a much better mom i'm a much better person like mm-hmm. i have patience with them i have peace i am capable of sitting there and, you know, listening to the story about the Legos and not like be on my phone, not present, thinking about yeah. like, oh my God, I forgot to order this Halloween costume. And if I don't do it right now, you know, like give yourself grace, find yourself a damn tribe and like, you know, you're doing the best you can and it's going to be okay. Yeah. There's one, one thing in there I wanted to say that's so important because I do completely agree with you is kids need to see us process emotions by no means. Like when I'm stressed out, I, I just try to not be triggered by something that they do and express it in a way that makes mm-hmm. them feel like they did something mm-hmm. wrong. But we are mm-hmm. very honest. Like if Will just needs to go take a break and go outside or like I need to go do something for myself, I will tell Ava and Jackson, I'll be like, listen, work has been like this this and this i'm super stressed out like i feel like my central nervous system is just heightened and i just need to take a minute and that's real that's very real and i i would hope that then they grow up knowing that hey these are these emotions are real and you're right it's okay yeah and it's okay so giving yourself grace and patience and walking through that and explaining that to your kids of hey i need space or I'm over stimulated or overcharged. Like when you give them grace and patience, it puts galoshes on their little feet so they can go through mommy storm and mm-hmm. play in the puddles without getting wet, but knowing that, 
hey, I get to take the glasses yeah. off. These are gonna we're gonna move through the storm. Maybe put a little rain slicker on them and an umbrella, and yeah. be like, we're going through the storm. We're gonna get through it. Totally. The storm will always end, but right now, just here's your grace and patience, and put your yeah. put your blinds on because we're gonna go through it, and we're gonna go through it together as a tribe, as a family, as a unit. Mm-hmm. So I love, it. yeah. I love that. Me too. No, for oh, sure. Oh. I tell my kids all the time. It's okay. It's okay to feel your feelings. I want you to feel your feelings. It's okay to be mad. It's okay to be sad. It's okay. Like, you know, I try and help them identify whatever it is that they're feeling. Like, hey, are you frustrated? Or hey, what's going on right now? Like, is you're screaming at me? Why are you know what what? And then once they identify, I say it's okay to be mad. It's okay to be frustrated. And I I say to them. Emery, I am so frustrated right now. Mommy's going to go sit outside for five minutes. I need a timeout, you know? Yeah. But anyways, yeah. uh, speaking of my kids, I have I to- I know what you're going to say. School. You got to go and we want to on your time. So you go, but thank you so much. We could talk about this all day and we just appreciate it. I your know, input. I loved it. Yeah. And again, we'll make sure all of the Freedom Foundation and all of Kayla's links are down in the show notes. So go back and listen to the other episode if you hadn't learned Fearless more about Foundation. Kayla. Fearless Foundation. I'm sorry. She just wish she was for brains. It's You're good. I'll make sure that the right contact is in the show notes. Um, but we want to really thank you for your time. And I hope to continue this conversation in the future and see where Fearless Foundation goes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you, my love. And until next time, y'all. Let's Let's discover discover together. together. We hope you've enjoyed this journey of exploration and learning as much as we have. Before you go, we have a special request for you, our beloved discoverers. We'd be thrilled if you could show your support in a few easy steps. Step one, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring that notification bell so you never miss a moment of discovery. Step two, if you're listening via Apple Podcasts, please take a moment to rate and review our show. Your feedback means the world to us and helps others discover our podcast too. Step three, whether you're on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast platform, please share the Discovery Doc podcast with your friends, family, and social networks. It's the best way to spread the joy of discovery. And finally, don't forget to follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at The Discovery Doc. Stay connected with us for updates, behind the scenes content, and so much more. Plus, for exclusive content and additional resources, be sure to check out our website at www.thediscoverydoc.com. And while you're there, if you have a burning question or a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show, simply let us know. Thank you, Discoverers, for being part of our incredible journey. Until next time, let's discover together. The content provided in this podcast provides general information and discussions on various topics related to health, wellness, and medical advancements. However, it is essential to understand that the content provided in this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The hosts, guests, and contributors are individuals sharing their personal experiences, opinions, and knowledge in their respective fields. While they strive to provide accurate, up-to-date information, medical knowledge is constantly evolving and the information presented in this podcast may not always reflect the most current research and medical guidelines. It is crucial to consult with a qualified healthcare professional or medical expert for specific medical concerns. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking medical treatment based on the information presented in this podcast. The Discovery Doc podcast encourage listeners to use their own judgment and discretion while implementing any suggestions, recommendations, or lifestyle changes discussed in this episode. Each individual's medical situation is unique and may work for one, may not be suitable or safe for another. The podcast hosts, guests, and contributors are not liable for any direct, indirect, consequential, or incidental damages or harm that may arise from listening or acting upon the information provided in this podcast. Listeners are responsible for their own health decisions and should exercise caution and seek professional guidance when necessary. By listening to this podcast, you acknowledge that you have read, understood, and agreed to this medical disclaimer. If you have any questions or concerns about this medical disclaimer, please consult a qualified healthcare professional.